I'm it went over oh. time. Oh, but I still let us in. You know why they let us in? Because we are the Golden Mike. And you know what? It's Golden Mike 145. Guy, do you know why there's been 145 episodes of this? Because nobody can cancel you. Because nobody can cancel me, guy! <laughs> um, I'm so stoked today, everybody, because not only are we talking about like productivity like we were yesterday, but what happens when productivity becomes an addiction and you're on the other end of it? You're the spouse of a person who has, uh, who's addicted to pro productivity. Guy Golan is a coach. Guy Golan, PhD. Guy Golan, um, researcher, is here to talk about that with us today. Guy, how are you doing today? Hey, Mark. How's it going? I'm living the dream, brother. I'm living the dream, man. Now, I'm not very happy about the fact that you picked up and left Tampa, but uh, how, how are your new digs over there? Well, you know, just like many of the clients I serve, I'm married to a medical doctor. So my wife has a great job offer in Texas, and we pack up, and we go, and we make the best of it. So I'm doing really well. I love North Dallas. Awesome place to be. Amazing. And hopefully in North Dallas, you'll come and see me, give my TED Talk in a couple Absolutely. Months. When is this uh, happening? Plug it. Uh, it's it's June sixteenth in Arlington, Texas. So, like for those of yeah. you in the in the area, come on and meet me. I'm a lot taller in person than <laughs> uh, <laughs> than I am on this screen. Um, given all of that, for those of you who haven't met me, Mark Wardone, positive psychology coach, which means two things. On a regular basis, I get to ask two questions. Number one. How happy are you? And number two, how much are you living in purpose? So, Guy, it's a double-barreled question, but I would love to hear your take on happiness and purpose. Great question. So I'll answer the question with a question because that's what coaches do. How could it be that we are living in one of the richest countries on earth where everybody has everything they need to survive, right? Right? most people, right? And have a very luxurious life, don't really have to worry about their personal, you know, safety all that much. And so we're in the richest country on earth, and yet we have the highest rates of depression, yeah. of substance abuse, of alcoholism, right? Why are so many people unhappy where on paper they should be absolutely delighted? Yeah. And I think that's some of the things we're going to talk about today. What's your take on that? What's your take on that phenomenon? Like, you know, you'd think that on paper it'd be un the United States by hands in a way th that would be the most happy uh, of the the countries when actually it's in Scandinavia where, where you're seeing high levels of happiness. Why do you think it's like that guy? Well, it's a great question. And what we're seeing happening in the United States is now starting, beginning to happen in countries like Korea and Japan and even China to an extent. And what and there are many reasons for it. But one of them is that in the Western world, we have a very simple formula for happiness. And that is be super successful, be rich, and everything will be great. And that simply does not work. So if you drive through the beautiful, you know, mansions in Orange County or in Bel, Bel Air or in Palm Beach in Florida, right? Anywhere in New York City, you know, you, you're driving through, you're saying, oh my God, these people are so lucky. They have such amazing lives. And in those amazing houses sit very lonely people. So the sole focus of uh, seeking happiness, finding happiness in the workplace may be one of the root causes amongst many others that lead to this uh, disconnect. Yo, and it's such a big, a, a big deal because we oftentimes forget about it that uh, other than our, 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 our beds, we spend more time with our colleagues than almost any other person um, out there, you know? And so it would behoove us to uh, figure out ways to make it work, uh, to, to find win-win situations in all of this. What have you found in, 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 um, in, in, in going into this, uh, profession? 
Yeah. So in the, uh, so I specialize, I'm a life coach, executive life coach. So I work with executives and super high achievers, right? Yeah. So medical doctors, people in finance, tech, law, right? And what I find is for a lot of those folks, their identity is directly linked to their success at work, right? So in their minds, their self-worth is a function of their uh, title, their financial success, monetary success, and uh, social recognition, right? Yeah. And the problem with that is when you put all of your eggs in one basket, that has consequences all along the way in many different places. Mm, interesting. What are, what are the consequences that you've seen? Well, let's talk about their personal consequences and their consequences yeah. your immediate surroundings, right? So let's focus on two. The personal consequences is that sometimes in life, things don't work out, right? So I actually have a client who is, is a day trader. And this day trader has been making, you know, six figures for the last 10 years. But there are some changes now to the world of day trading, algorithmic trading, right? Big data, artificial intelligence is changing the game. And this person who is super successful for 10 years was wiped, just wiped, lost, everything. So what's the problem here? When your identity, your, your concept of self is directly related to your financial performance, what happens when you lose it all? What happened to people in 2008 when they lost their real estate businesses, when they lost, you know, all of their money? Well, if you don't have anything else to fall back on, you can find yourself in a really, really desperate place. So that's one example of the shortcoming of putting all of your eggs at work. And you know what's, yep. what's interesting is that there's so many um, coaches, especially un, uh, untrained ICF, wait, unvetted ICF coaches who will go out and say that very thing that you're a loser until you can show me that the money is coming in. And then when the money is coming in, I told you it was working, so pad my stats, right? Um, there's so many different coaches out there that do that kind of thing. And it's based on that old old idea that like, you work hard, you get more money, right? Uh, it, it's, it's, it's antiquated, you know, you get, you work hard, you get more money. And then not only that, but you got to give it to your little spiritual guru over there who has no idea what they're doing, you know? So I, th I think it's really interesting that you bring that up. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, so that's the person who's going, the high achiever whose concept of self worth is derived from their profession. The other person, who's going to be directly uh, affected by the all-in uh, strategy is the spouse, right? So um, many times somebody who's married to a medical doctor like I am or is married to an investment banker or somebody in tech or law, and everybody says, wow, you're so lucky. You, you know, your, your spouse makes so much money. They're so important and all of that. But you find yourself home alone, home alone waiting, home alone raising the children, Home alone, giving up on your career so your spouse can have their career. Home alone, not being able to go places or having to move from one city to another to support your spouse, right? And oh my God, Mark, that creates so many problems for the spouse, leading to depression, oh, drug okay. abuse, yep. cheating, and, and divorce. And that's why I'm in this space. This is exactly why I'm in this space. I've been with my wife since medical school. And I've watched couples around us fall apart. Yeah, right? and that's that's the funny thing is grad and medical school is like the fair grounds for breaking up <laughs> and divorce, right? Yeah. Um, because there's so many things that are going on. There's so many directions you're getting pulled into. There's so many deadlines that are out of your control that – as a result of it, the, you see things like divorce and things happening like that. What what made it with – what's your wife's name? Siva. Siva. What do you think that are the qualities that you and Siva have that other qual – that uh, your colleagues didn't necessarily have? But if they had it, they might still be together. 
Well, my wife, Sivan, is amazing. She reads brain MRIs. So can you imagine? That's pretty cool, right? That's so pretty To have a, a super successful, super smart wife is a wonderful thing. But where, why we succeeded while others failed, I, I'm going to give a lot of credit to positive psychology yeah. and to the tools of, of, um, of coaching. Why? Because if you find yourself in a situation where you're married to somebody who's married to their work, right? So if you're married to busy, as is the name of everything I do, right? My podcast, <laughs> my my website, my Facebook group, my ebook coming out, married to busy, right? Yeah, if baby. you're married to if you're excuse the plug, if you're married to busy, you're probably feeling right now like you got the short end of the stick. Like this is not what you signed up for, right? Like you're totally stuck. And that may be right, right? You may have not known where you're going to self into. But that is not an empowered thought, right? That's not going to fix the problem for you. So what I work with with my clients is teaching them how to build an empowered life around the reality of their spouse's profession. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. What do you think? I mean, you've seen this for, for a while going on, this, this phenomenon. What do you think is the core of, of why wives are unhappy or, or spouses are, are unhappy when they're married to someone who really is, um, you know, a strong bread, breadwinner in the family. What is that? You know, well, like, what, is, what is the reason? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the answer is very simple. Uh, different needs, right? I mean, we don't get married so somebody else will provide for us, right? I mean, at least that should, that should not be, that should not be the reason why somebody marries. Some people do, right? But it's not the right reason. Uh, we get married. We're, we're, the expectation is um, attention, yeah. intimacy, yeah. Uh, shared burden, shared responsibilities, and doing things together, right? Yeah. But when you're married to an overachiever, those things are not necessarily available to you. Yeah. The kinda, number one. Uh, they're kind of like ro Lone Ranger. They kind of want to do it themselves. Well, they're busy at work. Yeah. Right. But so but the number one mark, if you have to put your finger on what is the one thing, what is the, at the core, at the root of the suffering? It has to do with the loss of personal identity, because when you are married to an investment banker, when you're married to a big lawyer or, or, or a politician. Right. So yeah. think about the, the new Congress in the new Congress. I think a third we have more women than ever in Congress. Right. And a lot of them are young women, right? So their husbands now become Mr. Congresswoman, right? <laughs> they are married to somebody else. So they probably have to move. They probably have to leave their job. And they have to make a lot of sacrifices, right? Sure. So when we do that, when, we do, when our spouses are so high achiever that their success necessitates us to make huge sacrifices, the biggest problem is we lose our own identity. So we, we uproot from our community where we grew up. We uproot from our close friends and family network. We have to leave our careers, our jobs sometimes, not always, sometimes. And, you know, it's very easy to become Mr. or Mrs. your spouse. But you're never only that person. Based on somebody else. Anybody watching right now this conversation that Guy and I are, are, are having about um sort of uh uh spouses married to sort of uh <laughs> professionals who are married to their jobs anyone ever anyone else feel that sort of loss of identity that uh a guy is 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 really eloquently thrown out there give me a thumbs up give me a heart or right in there let us know um that you know this isn't just theory but this is something that happened to yourself um n now guy has this ever happened to you yes sir ah. of course of course it happened yeah. to me now when it happened to you what what were some of the th the actions that you took? What were some of the inactions that you took uh, in terms of wanting to try to solve it? Well, it's a big problem, right? So again, you know, and everybody I knew in New York City, I lived in New York City for many years and during my wife's residency, so all the couples who are not doctors also were in my shoes, right? And after residency, uh, you know, they go to 
they go to fellowship, then they go and get private practice jobs, they go to the hospital, and especially when you have kids, right? If, some, if your spouse is at work 80 hours a week, who's going to take care of these kids, right? So they're allowed the to nurses. sacrifice. No. <laughs> the nursing station. Listen, the nurses work harder than doctors. Just I know. <laughs> um, but what do you do? How do you empower your life? What are the practical tools? It starts with your positive psychology. Mark, if you love positive psychology, give it a like. Ah, look at you. <laughs> ah, learn from the master. No, but Take it's it about from- positive psychology, right? It's about doing three things. First of all, keeping very, very close networks of support, right? And you may have had to move away from your home city, but you can't give up on that support. So while social media has many, many downfalls to it, many negative things to it, one of the beautiful things is you can find uh, support on certain Facebook groups, for example, right? Or meetups, for example. So maintain close relationships with other people. That's a huge component of positive psychology and happiness. Huge. Second thing is don't be a victim of your situation, mm. right? Never complain to your spouse about how busy they are. That's who they are. That's what they do. But rather be somebody who brings a positive energy home and when you talk to them don't complain strengthen them empower them when you talk to yourself don't be a victim you made the selection you made the choice this is your life you're going to make the best out of it right and third and finally you have to reinvent your identity Mm. right go out there find a new career find a new business find a job or profession that will complement the super busy schedule of the high achiever that you're married to. Uh, uh, I'm with you, Mark. You're, oh, this is brutal, people. Um, Your identity, you'll get the idea. <laughs> Close enough. Uh, Mark, are you with me? <laughs> yeah, I'm here, buddy. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so when you were when you were going through this yourself, was it was it a stage wise model? Like, <coughs> step one, I need to not be a, a victim, or was it all of them in tandem, like working together? Hmm. Well, I you know I think I think it's a process for everybody, and everybody it's different. But you gotcha. know, one of the best one of the best things to do is to hire a coach. I mean, I'm not just plugging myself. Any coach, because Plug me, yeah, exactly. Hire Mark. <laughs> hire me. Fine, no problem. Hire any of us. But um, yeah. the the great thing about having a coach is everybody needs somebody to talk to in a in a private, confidential, not judgmental environment. Second, you need somebody to keep you accountable, not only about being empowered and taking the right empowered actions, but also to help you manage your mindset. Life is all a game. Life is beautiful. And life is, everything is in the mind, right? And when we control our thoughts and actively, consciously convert negative thoughts into positive ones and we focus away from the bad onto the good, we find empowerment. It's really that easy. And that's what coaches really help us do. They keep us accountable. They give us tools. It's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. So is it a two-part piece or, or do we have more to it? To the what? To the process? Yeah, to the process. Of course. You work with a coach, you set goals, and you take massive action to change your life. Okay, You don't just wait for life to change. You change your life to be the, the, the most authentic and truth life that fits you and who you are and who you want to become. Yeah, and I, I think that's something that a lot of people think that, um, okay, I got my mindset right, I got my vision right, I've got it on my board, but you ain't doing shit. Like you're not <laughs> taking any action of, uh, towards it. And and, mm-hmm. and and the third part of, 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 of getting what you want really is taking um, unapologetic um action towards that vision that you created in the first two steps so um definitely 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 um 
what have, what have you seen have been the um, uh, sort of mistakes that people made make when they go into it and they're like, uh, yeah, I got this. Like, for example, not having a feedback loop where they don't see how bad it is, you know, and, and, and it's not until they get with the coach that they see how bad it is. What other things have you seen um, when it comes to massive action, uh, visioning, um, uh, you know, getting in in that process of change um, in which you see time and time again, people are making mistakes? It's a great question. Um, you know, ultimately, I think our lack of genuine relationships in the everyday life mm. makes it very easy to sort of fall into a rut and to tell ourselves a story in our head about how, you know, things didn't work out the way we wanted to, right? Yeah. And you, you were talking about vision boards and action. You know, this really leads to two paradigms in the world of coaching, right? One comes from the law of attraction paradigm, yep. right? Thoughts become things. And anybody, you know, who didn't watch The Secret, right? Right after you're done with Mark and me, go and type The Secret on YouTube, watch it. It's very inspirational. But, you know, having a vision board and sort of imagining the one day, you know, you're going to have a big house and a big car and, 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 the, and the relationship you're looking for and the children you want, all that, it doesn't actually lead to action, you know, I don't think. And another paradigm is more of the Darren Hardy paradigm, mm. right, which is, talks about the compound effect. It's taking these two millimeter shifts by having the right habits in place, by, by doing the small things like like picking up the cheeseburger or ordering the salad or skipping yoga class or not skipping yoga class yeah. or taking or taking the hour to write down in a journal or not, right? And in the long run, that will really lead to, to monumental shifts through two millimeter, you know, actions. So, you know, what is the road to starting? Mm -hmm. The road to starting is a decision. And the decision is I am responsible for my happiness. It may be true that other people are to blame for my situation, but that thought is not going to help me out. That's not an empowered thought, right? So the, the, the journey begins with a decision. That is, I am the master of my life. I am in charge of my outcome, and I'm the solution to the problem, right? This is imp very imp empowering stuff, and I'm just curious how many of your clients – um, come in saying, I want to save the marriage and then leave saying, no, it was actually the marriage that was holding me back. Like I'm going to fly baby, you know, like, are there a lot of clients that come through like that, that are just like, Oh, I, you know, the mindset is that stay together for the kids at all costs, blah, 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 blah. And then the other mindset is, is sort of, if I really want to be the greatest version of myself, I've got to let go of this. Mm -hmm. um, what are you mostly seeing when, when, when you're working with these clients? Well, listen, it's really a case-by-case -case situation, yeah. right? And there is no right answer. As coaches, it's not our job to recommend staying or leaving. That's absolutely yeah. not what we do. I, I believe yeah, that most people do. Uh, mo most people, most people want to save the marriage, especially if their children involved. Yeah. Look, marriage is not easy, no. right? It's not easy. But, you know, if, if you have the right tools, and this is a beautiful thing about coaching, because when you empower yourself, you automatically empower your spouse. And, and one, of the, one of the big mysteries about high achievers, people think, oh, my God, this person is a CEO, or this person is a medical doctor or a lawyer or or a high-tech professional executive, yeah. and you're thinking, oh my God, they got their stuff together. And guess what? Because they put all their eggs in one basket, they almost never have their stuff together. They're really good in the boardroom, <laughs> right? They're really good in the boardroom, but they're not so good with communication with the children. In outside domains, yeah. Right? They're not really good with the marriage. They're not really good with the interpersonal relationship with their extended families. So this is why if you are the empowered spouse, you automatically benefit by empowering yourself and you empower your spouse and your children because you, you provide them with the tools, right, of empowerment. Yeah. You solve their problems. You help them succeed more in the, in the real world, outside of work, 
and you're a great role model for each other. Oh, I love this. And, um, and guy, I know that you have, you know, I know that you have the wherewithal to put something to, together like this, but also at the same time, you put programs and coaching programs together um, like this. What does that look like if someone is usually at the end, I make the call to action, but like, no, now's <laughs> the time to make the call to action. Like someone thinking about guy, um, somebody thinking about, uh, you know, some of the questions, what are the initial questions that people have? Because sometimes they're like, I don't know if I'm in the right place. Have you ever had those people? Like, I've, I don't know if I'm in, I'm in the right place, but you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, what is, what is your take on people who are just like kind of being led in their journey and they come across you? Well, I, you know, I would tell them, you know, everybody's, most people out there feel the same, right? Mm. And it's so much easier to drive on cruise control, right? Than to change people or not, you know, we don't like change as, as human beings, right? We like oh. ritual and habit and stability and certainty. But if you're doing the same things over and over and over, it's not going to bring a different outcome. I hired my first coach in my 40s. And just like yoga, which I started really in my 40s, the initial feeling, the initial thought was, why didn't I do this 20 years before? <laughs> my life would have been completely different, right? So, uh, you know, hire a life coach. The thing about getting a life coach is there's so many of us, and it's really hard to find the right coach. Yeah. So uh, I always joke that finding a coach is like, it can feel like dating, right? Oh, there's so many of them. And, you know, everybody promises you the earth and the moon and the stars. Stay away from any coach who promised to transform your life within, you know, 72 hours. You know, mm. if you just do this program, you're like, it's not going to work that way, right? Coaching, if you're going to go into the world of coaching, hire a coach that you feel a connection with that is on the same vibe as you. You know, there are many people who love me as a coach, but some people are going to do a lot better with another coach, right? So yeah. it's about finding the right match, the right chemistry, the right vibe. Also, ask yourself a couple of questions, such as, am I willing to work really hard to change my life? Mm, absolutely. absolutely. Because we, we don't take clients who are not committed to their, to their own success, right? Coaching no, is a... All right, so it's a once a week phone call on Zoom, right? But it's also homework. Homework means um, journaling, putting together gratitude lists, reading books, listening to podcasts, uh, doing affirmations, watching YouTube videos. And it's such, our, a, it's such a, a intense process, and a lot of people don't think that. Well, it's Mark. It's intense, but it's so much fun. Oh, it's yeah, so absolutely. much fun. My my session is that people are like, oh my god, an hour is already over. It's fun because the cool thing about coaching is you see immediate results. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to have a transformation, but you see change. Yeah. And so yeah. a lot of people, you know, they go to a psychologist for 30 years and have nothing against psychologists, right? But they're like, oh, my God, I've been with a shrink for 10 years. I'm taking antidepressants and, and nothing's happening. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm, I'm totally not laughing at those people. I mean, I know yeah. so many of those people. And the beautiful thing about coaching is that it's got to move because that's what coaching is about it's about taking you what a coach does it takes you point a to point b love that's it, it. Love we'll it. we'll give you the tools and accountability guy golan what are you most ex, uh, excited about in the next coming weeks for you well first of all i'm on the golden mic show with mark i'm pretty excited about that that's pretty amazing man yeah that's pretty um, cool. But in but other, other things, in, in other, other that, things, so I know let me tell you, of, I know you have, I have a lot so much. Going on. So Mark, I just launched the new married to busy.com website and the new married to busy podcast. Is that, and guess what? To, is that married to busy.com? It's married to busy. The spelled out T O not the number two married to busy.com married to busy Facebook group. We're just, you know, if you're married to somebody who's married to their work, or if you're married to your job, you should join Married to Busy. So we have awesome, awesome interviews over there. And my, you know, my coaching program is I do one-on-one. -on -one, and I also do group coaching. So right now I'm setting up a group coaching program for medical, for female medical doctors and medical residents. I'm also going to launch one in the summer for um, medical students. 
Amazing. So, yeah, man. Amazing. So, I mean, it's all about helping people succeed in life, enjoy life, transform their lives through hard work and through committed to being responsible for your own well-being. Amazing. Well, I used to teach in grad schools, and I also know that uh, it's something about 70% are going through mental health breakdowns in grad schools. So if you ever uh, are looking for a person like that, please keep me, keep me in uh, front of mind, front of mind. But more importantly, we have a lot of things going on when it comes to our relationship with money, with our relationship with work, our relationship with others. Um, and when twisted a little bit wrong, it could be an addiction to work. So like, um, Guy, I've absolutely loved what you've, what you've thrown down. It's all here on, on, on the site. Um, guy, I'd love to keep in touch with you, man. Like we, we, we said it before, but like we did it, it didn't happen, but let's make it happen this time. Um, mm -hmm. I would, I would love to, to, uh, to be a part of this movement that's moving forward. Um, guy, you know what's going on here, baby. You've said enough. The golden mic, the golden mic is coming down from your ceiling. Um, over there, uh, and, and, uh, tell me where you're at again. I'm in Dallas, Texas, Dallas, just half Texas. an hour away from where Mark is going to deliver his Ted talk. And you're going to come see soon. me, right? I'm going to come see you and I'm going to oh, buy you lunch. Amazing dog. Um, uh, so this golden mic comes down and the power of the golden mic is that it has, uh, the ability to translate into every single language all across the world, which means this guy Every single person is, is listening to what it is that you have to drop on them. Guy Golan, your golden mic is live now. It was wonderful. Thanks so much. <laughs> Absolutely lovely. Go hold that golden mic up. Hold that golden mic up. Smash it. Smash that golden mic! Smash that golden mic, guy! I have no aggression this morning, Mark. I'm just happy and chill. Smash it! Smash it! Smash it! I'm smashing it! Oh. Smash it for me. Here we go. I'm dizzy. Um, so, <laughs> so, guy, I want to have you back on. I want to be on your podcast at some point if you think that it will work. Um, and by all means, you're more than welcome to come onto the Joy Revolution podcast as well. That's just about to launch. Um, Guy Golan, Mark Cordone, episode 145. Here's what we got for you. If you're feeling happy and you're living life to its fullest potential, what is your responsibility to change history for the future? Guy Golan, Mark Cordone. Episode 145, we are out. <laughs> See y'all. I think we're out. <laughs> Stay smiling. <laughs>